to English. So the text in Nepali would be around 100 words and the text will be uh, related to uh, the topics of international relation, international politics, foreign policy and diplomacy. So mostly you can expect a, a Nepali text in relation to the syllabus that you can see here. So uh, the translation will carry 10 marks. And the other section in this uh, subsection in this section A is uh, about grammar where you will have uh, words, uh, synonyms, antonyms and you will be required to write email messages and uh, you will require to answer telephonic conversation. So the breakdown of this uh, subsection is that you will have five questions and each question will carry two marks so total will be ten under the comprehension uh, I think this would be one of the easiest subsections or subtopics under this uh, section a where you will be uh, given 150 words in a in a paragraph uh, followed by five questions so the best strategy to deal with comprehensions question is to read the question before you uh, go through the text that is provided so when you read the question beforehand you know what to look for into the text okay so section B section B carries 30 marks section B carries 30 marks and there will be four short questions each carrying five marks so the total will be 20 and one long question of 10 marks uh, under this section there are various subsections subtopics related to international relation and diplomacy where we'll discuss about meaning scope of international relation and uh, definition of diplomacy and nature and function of diplomacy there are two um, new terms relatively new terms in international relation that is soft power in our next videos and uh, in our online classes we will discuss about soft power what is soft power okay uh, there are different types of power there are there is hard power there is soft power and there is smart power so in our syllabus there is we'll discuss about meaning of soft power and what are the soft power potentials of nepal and uh, lastly under this topic discuss about economic diplomacy which is one of the uh, foremost priorities of of uh, in any in any foreign policy of any country and economic diplomacy uh, is the f forefront topic that needs to be addressed in any diplomatic uh, services these days okay and uh, in, in international relation and treaties we will discuss about state recognition of state how a state is recognized by other states and how a government is recognized by uh, the state other states uh, recognition simply denotes the legitimacy okay so we'll discuss in detail during the online lectures we'll also discuss about the meaning of sovereignty the sources of international law and treaties Then uh, there is a topic related to Nepal, United Nations and international institutions. So we'll discuss about UN, the principal purpose of UN and the role of UN, so the role of Nepal in United Nations and Nepal and UN peacekeeping. Nepal is one of the largest contributor to UN peacekeeping missions. We'll discuss in detail about that as well. And uh, IMF, World Bank, ADB, AIIB, these are the development partners of Nepal. And these are the institutions, IMF, World Bank, it's an institutions under the UN. We'll also uh, have a basic inter 
introduction and working of WTO and Nepal and uh, in basic information about Nepal and uh, WTO, the relationship between Nepal and WTO. Under regional cooperation, we'll study about Nepal and SARC. We'll have a in brief introduction to BIMSTIC, non-aligned movement, European Union, ASEAN Group 77, ACD, that is Asia Cooperation Dialogue, uh, the Shanghai Cooperation Dialogue. And this is one of the important topic, considering that Nepal is a landlocked country. Uh, we'll discuss about uh, least developed countries. What are least developed countries? What are the criteria that uh, keeps them in the category of least de developed countries? The problems faced by least developed countries will be addressed and uh, will be discussed rather than addressed. Okay. Uh, the rights of landlocked developing countries. What are the rights of landlocked developing countries? Will they have any access to the nearest sea? Okay, those questions we will discuss and we will find an answer to that. Uh, the challenges of landlocked developing countries. Okay, and that will conclude section B. Under section C, we will discuss about foreign policy. Foreign policy, mostly foreign policy of Nepal. What are the guiding, guiding principles of Nepal's foreign policy? So Nepal as a peace-loving nation, and the foreign policy of Nepal is guided by the principle of Panchasil. Okay, Panchasil has the origins um, in the teachings of Gautama Buddha, that is peace and uh, non-animosity with friendliness with every country. Okay, and uh, UN peace UN Charter. And there is a special adherence to uh, UN Charter as well. Nepal strictly follows UN Charter while uh, uh, defining its foreign policy. And we'll also discuss about determinants. What are the factors that affect Nepal's foreign policy and what are the elements of national power? And uh, since the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is the implementing body, that is the body that implements the foreign policy abroad. So we'll discuss about the Ministry of Foreign Affairs role and uh, followed by the national interest of Nepal. What are the national interests that needs to be projected, that needs to be secured in international arena? Okay, those things. What are the primary national interests? What are the secondary national interests? We'll discuss and we will learn about those things. Now, Sagarmatha Sambad is a global dialogue platform that is, this is initiated by Ministry of Foreign Affairs Nepal. It was, the first edition was supposed to held in April 2020, but due to the pandemic, it was postponed indefinitely. Okay, and uh, under diplomatic and consular functions, we'll discuss about the functions of diplomatic and consular missions, diplomatic privileges and unit, immun, immunities. What are the privileges and immunities enjoyed by diplomats and uh, embassies abroad? We'll discuss about consular services, passports, visas, and attestation of documents. Those things we'll discuss and which are the main bodies responsible for to provide the consular services at home and at abroad. We'll know about uh, passports, which are also called MRTDS, which means the full form of which is machine readable travel documents. We will discuss about foreign employment cycle. As we know that uh, close to 29% of our GDP is contributed by remittance from uh, Nepalese workers 
who are working in different part of part of the world mostly but mostly in middle east so we'll discuss about foreign employment cycle and what would be the role of uh, diplomatic and consular missions to protect and secure the rights of uh, foreign workers nepalese foreign workers okay the last part in section c is related to the diplomatic terminologies okay so in diplomacy there are a set of uh, terminologies that are used more particularly in diplomacy so the, the, such as uh, excellency we, when you address an ambassador or a top level diplomat you use excellency then there is plenipotentiary there is agreement attache ad memoir embassy the embassy has two parts a chancery where the main official activities takes place and the residence where the diplomats resides okay and there is a consulate the difference between a consulate and an embassy okay the diplomatic bag communique message letter of credence letter of recall note verbal such d affairs ai that is ad interim honorary consul diplomatic corps protocol persona non grata status quo asylum and rsvp so these are the limited terminologies in the syllabus that we will discuss and uh, so this is the overall picture of uh, the syllabus of uh, third paper um, okay uh, the paper name is english language and diplomacy so all the best and uh, let's meet in the next lecture thank you